I recently heard the story of a group of Somalian Christians who risked everything each night to read this book. In their village in Somalia, the Bible was banned. And so one of the more courageous Christians would wait until the sun had set. He would quietly sneak out of the village. He would walk to a cave where their only copy of the Bible was hidden. He would take it out, sneak back into the village where by candlelight, a group of Christians were waiting to study the words of this book. And then before the sun had risen to expose their Bible study, he would sneak back to the cave, put the Bible back, get back home, and crawl into bed. Pretty impressive, huh? A guy who would risk everything, not just his time, his comfort, his convenience, he was willing to risk his very life for the words of this book. But if you know the words of this book, that, that maybe makes some sense. Now, we can learn a lot of things about God from the world around us. He's powerful, he's wise, he's beautiful, he is generous. But it takes more than nature. It, it takes the words of the scripture to realize that God is love, that God forgives, that through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, people just like us can be happy in God's presence forever, that we don't have to fear death, we don't have to live in shame, we belong in it. Like the words of this book are worth everything, which is why I'm so excited for you. Uh, you are brand new to reading the Bible. And I hope you caught my last video. If, if not, I'd love for you to check that out because I, I encouraged you, when you start reading the Bible, to find someone who has read the Bible. Find someone who can be your guide, who can help answer your questions. Now, if you found that person already, I'm ready to give you my first step in a number of steps of where you should begin in this big book. Now, the Bible, to be honest, is a lot of pages. Uh, this might be the biggest, longest, most complex book that some of you read <laughs> in your entire life. So where should you begin? Now, there's no one exactly right answer to that question. But in my experience, where I think you should begin is with Jesus. Here's what I mean. Uh, the Bible is broken up into what are called two testaments, the Old and New Testament. Think like before Jesus and after Jesus. And each of those two testaments are broken down into books like Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus in the Old Testament or Matthew, Mark, Luke, John in the New Testament. And then each book, you still with me so far, <laughs> is broken down into chapters. There's uh, over 1,000 separate chapters in the Bible. And then each chapter is broken down into little verses. I think there are 31,173 verses in the Bible. Now, that might make you panic. <laughs> Don't panic. It's kind of like addresses and streets and cities and state lines. It just helps us find where things are in the Bible. But it kind of begs the question, with 31,173 different options, where should you begin? And my answer for you is Jesus. Instead of starting at page one, I would encourage you to start with the four biographies that tell the story of Jesus. In the Bible, they're called Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They were written by first century eyewitnesses and friends of eyewitnesses who wanted to get the story of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection right. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Uh, you might think of them as four biographies um, or documentaries of the life of Jesus. You've seen a documentary, right? Um, it doesn't cover every last second that happened to someone, but, but they kind of pick little snippets to tell a certain story. You know, picture Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John as like guys with cameras who are editing the footage to make a point about what Jesus was like. That's where I want you to start. Now, to give you a heads up, there's a lot of overlap in that documentary footage. Just like if you watched uh, a couple of news stations covering the same sporting event, you might see some of the same hits or the same plays. Uh, especially with Matthew, Mark, and Luke, you're going to see a lot of overlap. Um, John has a lot of unique things, but I really want you to read all four so that you get this comprehensive and a little bit repetitive picture of who Jesus is and what he did. Now, that's going to take you, if you're an average reader, about four and a half hours. And four and a half hours might seem like a lot, but let's be honest, it's like one Avengers movie. <laughs> for some of us, we watch four hours of YouTube a week. Uh, maybe for some of you, four hours of YouTube a day. It's a half a season of The Office. And I just want to tell you that Jesus is worth it. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. 
And if I could give you just one Bible passage to convince you to do it, it comes at the end of those four biographies. In John chapter 20, one of Jesus' best friends, the Apostle John, writes these words. These are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. That's really the point. Not just to say that you read the Bible or you, you check those boxes, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, but to find life in his name. I know you're just like me. You're looking for life. A life where you matter. A life where you don't have to be stuck in the past. A life where God is close to you, where God has plans for you. A life where there's forgiveness, where there's patience, where there's guidance. These words were written that you could find a life just like that through Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Son of God. Now, I can't wait in future videos to tell you what to do after that, but I don't want to overwhelm you just yet. So first of all, find your someone and then start with Jesus. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, that you can draw close to Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and the Savior of the world. Did you enjoy this video? Make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube so you don't miss a single message. Click right here.